what's going on guys, it's Seth Monk here. Today we're going to be talking about the rather interesting uh, video that we recently got from Treyarch in regards to Black Ops Cold War and Warzone uh, for the new Call of Duty game. What's going on guys, it's Death Monk here. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Black Ops Cold War and Warzone Season 1. Uh, basically, we're going to be checking out uh, the brand new maps, we're going to be talking about the weapons that we learned about, we're going to be talking about uh, what we're going to expect to see with Warzone and uh, Zombies, and what's going on with Nuketown. So, <clears throat> uh, basically, if you're excited for this, give this video a thumbs up, drop a like, hit the subscribe button if you're new, hit that notification bell to stop us from upload. I have noticed that around 80% of you haven't hit that subscribe button, very important guys. So, uh, make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel. So. Uh, basically, for those who don't know, the video by Treyarch and Call of Duty has recently dropped, so we're going to be watching this, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about this in detail. So, without further ado, guys, let's watch this video. This week, Black Ops Cold War will invade Warzone with Season 1 storming onto consoles and PC. Players will get free content throughout the season, including eight free maps across Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, three free to acquire weapons, a new battle pass system, and more. Today, members of the Treyarch and Raven development teams provided a bit more insight into what's in store. For the full length studio broadcast, check out Treyarch's YouTube channel. For the highlights, stay tuned, because right now, we're dropping into Rebirth Island with Raven's senior executive producer, Ryan Burnett, to learn more about Warzone's new map. When we thought of Rebirth Island, we wanted to look back into the Black Ops lore and really dig deep into where did the Nova 6 gas originate from? Players will experience an uh, open area and open island uh, where we'll be able to roam around the map and in there, in the center of this island, is the actual bioweapons facility. Season 1 also marks the arrival of three new operators. Out of the gate, starting the week of launch, players will get to know Stitch. Discarded by the Soviets, he's a former bioweapons expert hellbent on revenge. With new play spaces and operators in the mix, you'll need some additional tools in the toolbox. Expect a huge addition to your Warzone armory, as a vast infusion of Cold War weaponry becomes available for you to use in your loadouts. Unless a weapon has a particular challenge needed to unlock it, Black Ops Cold War primary and secondary weapons, including blueprint variants, will now be accessible in Warzone. Here's Treyarch's Tony Flame to share more about the two new weapons players can expect at launch, along with a brand new score streak. Let's start with the Groza assault rifle. From a gameplay perspective, uh, it's a bullpup, which means it's gonna be a little bit quicker on the draw. You're gonna be able to ADS a little bit quicker. You'll be coming out of sprint a little bit faster. And it's a lot of fun. It's very unique visually. On the flip side, to switch to the MAC-10, you've got a traditional Black Ops favorite here in the MAC-10. It's an incredible SMG. It's got the fastest fire rate of all the SMGs. It's kind of a bullet hose, but it's a ton of fun to use. This is the score streak, the harp, the high altitude recon plane. You call it in, and it's going to tell you where all the enemies are. It's going to show the direction they're facing. There's no counter for it because it's a high-level score streak, uh, other than to shoot it down. Things don't quite go your way in Warzone. You'll get the ch Just before we carry on with this, guys, uh, basically he has missed out on a couple of uh, other weapons. Uh, there's a sword, I believe, or a very short knife called the Wasakashi. Uh, basically, that can do like um, a short, uh, slightly shorter range than a combat knife can do but it has very quick uh, action time. So you'll be able to like pull off. It's kind of like if you ever play it, use the Ripper back from Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4. Uh, basically, that's what it looks like, guys. So that's a rather interesting new melee weapon there. So I think there's one other off the top of my head, but I think it's a little bit slower in terms of uh, speed time. But um, that's going to be really interesting as well. I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head, but um, that's going to be really cool as well. So I just want to point that out to you chance for another go, but this time with two new Gulag experiences. The Rebirth Island is all about uh, the prisoners, right? So as you go down the hallways, the metal detectors go off, alert your enemy, let you know where you're at. So we're adding a little twist there to your 1v1. Shifting gears to Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, the launch of Season 1 also ushers in the arrival of eight maps, mixing up a range of 6v6, 2v2, and fireteam experiences. Here, for the rundown, is Treyarch's Matt Schrantz. We've got a new 66 map, The Pines, and an 80s mall. So we've got all the 80s mall fanfare. Raid is returning. Plays really well in every game mode. 
the team has spent a lot of time focusing on making sure that Raid plays like it played in Black Ops 2. We'll have U-Bond, it's actually under the Berlin Wall in an underground tunnel. We also have ICBM, which I believe is actually our smallest gunfight map. It's located in a launch facility. We've got KGB, which is located in a Soviet financial building. Uh, we've got Game Show, and this is just a, it's just a fun map. It is set on a, on a game show stage. Nuketown Holiday, we've got trees, we've got wreaths, we've got snowmen. Looking ahead to some other things mid-season, looks like the team's got some plans for something called Sanatorium. Sanatorium is located in Russia. It's our biggest fire team map to date. We find that it lets you spread your wings a little bit further. With Newtown 84 now in the mix, Treyarch delivers on the nostalgia with a holiday themed version of the Black Ops cult classic. It was just it was just a fun thing when we were stringing up the lights and kind of brainstorming what we could do is it felt very different. It feels it feels really cool. The holiday spirit isn't just limited to new stop that there for a second. Uh I'm surprised I actually didn't touch up on this. Uh, basically, there's also two new uh, modes that's going to be coming. One returning, one brand new. Uh, the, the returning mode will be Prop Hunt, uh, which is going to be some point during uh, the mid-season of Season 1. So that's going to be really cool. I'll, I'll, I think majority of people who watch my videos probably know what Prop Hunt is. But um, for those of you who never played before, if you... Basically, one team is humans, another team is actually props from the Pacific map that you're playing on. Uh, the idea is for the hunters to hunt down those props, which can be easily misplaced if you look in the original version of the map, as if you're playing normal 6v6. Uh, so one team uh, can be any prop from the Pacific map. They can only change up to, I think it might be two or three times. Um, and the idea is to stay alive while not, not get killed by the enemy hunters. So that's really good. I think it's a 6v6 mod. And I believe last time I checked, I think it was around first to three point two wins, I think. So we'll have to wait and see how that's going to work. But I uh, can't wait for that, guys. And I think there's another mode off the top of my head. I think it's called Dropkick. And the idea is it's kind of like your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? VIP escort. Only difference is uh, yeah, the person who has possession of the briefcase uh, that's the only person that can score points. So the idea is to keep the person with the briefcase alive. So that's going to be really interesting as well. I'm just going to move on to zombies here. Town. Turns out that the undead get a whole lot undeader in D Machina, with Treyarch turning the map into more of a winter wasteland than a wonderland. This season, there's plenty of cheer to keep you in the Yuletide mood. Uh, we are adding a new limited time mode called Jingle Hells. Uh, which is a re-theming of D Machina for the holidays. Players will now use snowballs scattered across the map to freeze zombies and drop presents. And inside those presents, you'll get all sorts of things, ranging from coal to ray guns. In addition to in-game intel and the introduction of the new Battle Pass weapons and customization content for zombies, the undead also get new play spaces for Onslaught on PlayStation. Throughout the seasons, as we add these multiplayer maps, they will be added to Onslaught as well. So you'll be finding new opportunities to earn chalices, take on as many megatons as you can to earn rewards. Later this season, in addition to the Pines, we'll be adding Raid as well. Additionally, fans can expect the new Crank mode for the first time ever in Zombies, coming mid-season, plus much more to come for Zombies in Season 2. So you have a timer of 30 seconds that's ticking down. When you're zero, you die. Um, every time you kill a zombie, that timer resets. It's even more frantic in four player when you're juggling between all these different zombies, trying to make sure everyone stays alive. When season one launches, remember that the cross progression system that links player progression, prestige levels, and the battle pass between Black Ops Cold War and Warzone becomes available in season one. That's right, when season one drops, expect your season level to be synchronized based on your current season level in Black Ops Cold War. Your previous unlocks from Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare, such as weapons, perks, score streaks, and more, will remain unlocked. For all the details about Season 1 and what's in store, head to callofduty.com to learn more. Right, uh, just want to touch up on a few more things that <clears throat> uh, these guys from Track actually didn't mention. Uh, basically, for those who don't know about the progression from um, Call of Duty Warzone and Black Ops Cold War, 
if you haven't reached, let's say for instance, because um, I'm on prestige one, uh, level 10 at the moment, uh, the idea is to get to level 55 uh, before um, 16th of December. If you fail to do this, uh, your rank will be reset to the beginning of the prestige that you can last completed. So if you didn't manage to prestige before December the 16th, before the update, your rank will be reset to rank one, so you have to go through it all again. <clears throat> If you have, let's say, reached prestige one, and let's say you managed to reach like level 10, for example, again, your prestige will be reset to prestige one, rank one. Just wanna make that clear, guys. If you make your way up to, I think the max is prestige three, if I'm not mistaken, level 100, from what I understand, uh, that will, um, I think, for, I believe, last time I checked from in as is, so. But it might, it might have to reset back to prestige three, level one, but we'll have to wait and see. So just want to make that clear to you guys. Um, another thing, a few more things I want to touch up on here is the weapons. Now, basically, for those who don't know, uh, you will start off with the Mac-10 and the Groza Assault Rifle, uh, two free weapons uh, during the Season 1 Battle Pass. Uh, tier, roll, tier, bleh, tier 0 Instant Unlocks. So, first of all, there will be Stitch, with the, which is that new villainous character, introducing an operator, which is signature red-acted outfit skin. <coughs> We've also got the Adler Operator Skin and Mission. Uh, it gets a Traveler Skin with the Urban Infiltration Mission, which would, when completed, earn you two new skins, a calling card and more. The Silver Flash Watch, an 80s inspired wrist accessory that's synced with the real world time. Seasonal XP Boost, and offers a 10% increase on all XP during, earned during Season 1. So there's also going to be Season 1 Weapon Blueprints. Uh, these have been a huge selling point for all battle passes since Modern Warfare. And this will include, Season 1 will include 20 of these, spread across 7 different primary and secondary categories, including the Arid Constructor AR at Tier 81, Constable Tactical Rifle at Tier 85, and the Country SMG at Tier 95, all free. <coughs> There's new cosmetic skins for several operators that are also being released with the Battle Pass, which are the Red Outfit at Tier 10 for Beck, the Base Jumper for Adler at Tier 90, and a new finishing move called Pain in the Neck at Tier 19. Four Tier 100 items, and I believe last time I checked is the Prisoner Skin for Stitch. They've seen, where, they've seen that he wears when he escapes from the Gulag. The Natural Order Blueprint for the new Groza Assault Rifle. And two Assault Vehicle Skins, one for each for Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. As well as the Season 1 Emblem, which is animated. In addition to this, all of this is definitely worth noting that the Season 1 Battle Pass will yield 1300 Call of Duty points back if you manage to reach Tier 100, which means that unless you spend these points, you can keep purchasing future passes without having to spend any more money. So, hope you guys found this video rather interesting. If you did, drop a like, hit the subscribe button if you're new, hit that notification bell to stop us and upload, and we'll see you very soon, and hopefully we're going to get a little bit more of an insight as to what uh, Season 1 has to offer us. So, oh, I'll see you soon. Until the next episode, peace out.